Right, hello everyone. So, as requested by MB, I'm doing a video on how you wire up a Memcom lift alarm. So, for this video, I'll be using an Avaya Memcom Plus version 4. Um, I do have an older one, but I'm going to be using this one because I'm more familiar with this one. And the other one has a weird problem which I'm yet to solve. So, what do we have here then? So, starting over here, this is the power cable with the Memcom's wiring block connected to it. That will be the main wiring for the Memcom today. The Memcom's microphone, which comes from Avaya, which connects to it, not through that, but through its own terminal block, which is under the cap at the top. A 12 volt power supply, which I'll explain in a few minutes. Obviously, the Memcom Plus itself, you know, not a lot I can say about that until we start using it. A telephone cable with its ends exposed. This will be used for um, allowing it to connect to a telephone line and dial out, which will be shown at the end of the video. You don't have to have a lift alarm button, but any button will do. But I've got a lift alarm button, so we'll be using that. Um, but you'll need one of them. The reason there are two cables going into this crimp is purely because that's the negative so this will be positive button and positive light or the other way around I can't exactly remember we'll have a look in a little bit a buzzer which will obviously act as the alarm when the alarm is pressed before it dials out you don't have to use these if you've got long cables on your buzzer but this is a link through cable I've also got another one off camera if necessary I haven't totally worked this out in my head, so we'll kind of just be going off the top of things. You'll also be needing a small flathead screwdriver, that's because the terminal block there. And one handy thing which I always keep to reference is the wiring guide for the wiring blocks. So, not a lot left to do other than really to get going. So, I'm going to start by moving some of this stuff off the table get the memcom itself out of the way because nothing actually gets wired into that everything that you'll be wiring will go into this and it will be then connected to it so we'll get a bit of slack on this cable move everything out of the way that we're not going to be using just yet right in fact yeah we'll start with the phone cable so let's untangle that this is probably the most simplest part that you can do at home. Purely because these cables are obviously widely available and they're simple. So, you can start by undoing the clips on here. There's a three clip, four clip, well, oh, I can't count sometimes. Four clips, two either side and two at the back. That will leave you with that. So, you need to undo this little clip here. These probably are the most fiddly screws going. No one likes a flathead. I hate them personally. Especially on cases like this. Where you forget to bring a big screwdriver and then your little screwdriver keeps slipping off. So that will obviously loosen all that off. I'm going to be taking this off for now, purely because it will make things easier. Especially when we put it all back together. So we can get these out of the way for now. So obviously if you look back at your diagram, it's going to tell you where cables go. From what I remember off the top of my head, don't get me wrong, I could definitely be wrong on this. but. I know definitely by looking at the diagram, your telephone cable is your top one pins, one to two. And I know that the green cable goes in there. So you get them in there nice and snug. Obviously with crimps, you don't want to do it up too tight because you will end up bending the crimps. So there you go, that's part one done already, the telephone cable. <clears throat> so next on the agenda, 
we'll do the complicated, well kind of complicated bit, but kind of not. Next we'll do the lift alarm buzzer itself. So for this obviously you're going to need your buzzer, your link through cable and that buzzer's power supply. So I'm going to start by undoing the power supply and we'll just dangle that to the floor for now. So on these cables where it's both black, obviously if you've got your red and um, black cable you know which is which. If you end up having one of these, look on both the cables and you'll notice that at least one of them will have these grey dashes down. Now that is your negative cable. That's the one you're going to want to leave off. So you're going to want to split this cable a little bit now because these are going to get broken off. So you're going to want to take your positive and once again I'm going to reference my diagram because I can't remember all this off the top of my head but I can see that the power supply goes into the one labelled number 5 which lazy me has left undone from the last time I used this loom which then means that this pass through cable that I've made up will go into the one next to it which is number 6 so then you take your negative end of your power supply and you put that to the negative end of the buzzer and then obviously you take the positive end of your link through cable and put it to the positive end of the buzzer from what I vaguely remember that's the way you do it like I say vaguely I'm sure that's the way you do it but still not even me I'm, one, I'm not 100% but I'm sure that is well we'll find out soon won't we so next we're going to wire up the lift alarm button so, unlucky me has let the button get tangled with all the other cables. So, let's quickly untangle that. Right, so we'll put that over there for now. We will also be discussing programming the um, lift alarm up vaguely. There's not much you can do for programming, but we'll be talking about that anyway so you need to find your negative for the button which will go into number 15 on the um, wiring block so that's our negatives done so now you need to look on your diagram because you need to look at which one you need so obviously this is the alarm button so you're going to want to wire your light up to the alarm light terminal the way this basically works is there's alarm light which is the button so while the lift alarm's dialing out that button will light up once it's answered it will go out the speak light is obviously once it's connected to an operator that one will illuminate to say the passengers in the lift car can now speak. So we need to do alarm light because that's the only one I currently have. You can do speak light but I just don't have one. So alarm light is number 7. And as I said previously I can't remember which one's which so I'll be looking at this and it looks like my alarm light is this one so as I said previously that's number 7 on here so we'll be undoing that that's number 7 in and then then on the diagram you need to look for your alarm button which is number 9 on the wiring block just a heads up as well once we're in the house to show the lift alarm calling out 
I will be disconnecting the power to the buzzer purely because I obviously don't want to cause a nuisance to everyone that's in my house. So that then is the lift alarm pretty much wired up for what you can do at home. So I'm just going to neaten these cables up a little bit now and move start moving things into the terminal housing. So I'm going to sit this at the front. Also you can use it with just the block, you don't have to have this plastic sheath in, obviously that's just something that's there to make it look nice and neat. But that's not actually a requirement. I assume on top of lifts it probably is a requirement, but when you're just playing around with them at home obviously, you don't really have to go by the actual official guidelines. Obviously play safe with the um, main power in there. So once that's back on, we can do our best to screw this back down and keep our cables nice and neat. This is where all the fun begins, isn't it? Oh, what do you know, one cable sprung out. I hate that, that adds so much. To the point where I might actually replace these one day with um, standard ones. Well, at least you guys get to have the fun of watching me struggle to screw off flatheading with a teeny tiny screwdriver. Right, so that's them in. So now we can put the top back on the wiring block. Just make sure all your sides are clicked in and the wiring block is in the middle. Now what we can bring into play is the actual memcom itself. So while we're prepping that, we will plug in the wiring block now. So we're gonna put that over there. So next on the agenda is we're gonna take this little clip off and plug in our external microphone, which is literally as simple as done. Then you need to route that cable to the side and there's a little shroud there which will obviously protect that cable. Make sure it's in there. This is another hard part to get on but there we go, now that's on. So now we can actually power the Memcom. So, oh, bloody out, hitting the screen. But now we will plug in the power supply to the buzzer, plug in our memcom which I will turn on in just a second, try and get this in a decent position where you guys can see it, right so that is essentially that now. Everything's wired up as it should be. So this should now work. So I'm going to zoom in on the Memcom. So turning it on, you will see that. And then this is it booting up. There you go, status OK. It will pick up a fault in a minute, which will be that it um, doesn't have a dial tone, which is normal because it hasn't been connected to a phone line. So default programming codes for these is literally 1234 and this is where you'll put your alarm numbers in. Programming that, pretty simple, just put your number in, hash, to clear it it's just. So obviously then you've got alarm number 2, number 3, number 4, tech alarm for it updating its remote database. 
then obviously background calls, how many dial attempts, there's lots of different things, speaker volume, these units themselves are pretty loud themselves, the time, which I'm going to assume is probably wrong, it was close enough wasn't it, so the other things that you can play with on here is obviously your AC fail delay, in car delay, answer delay. These are all of the like alarm button delays and stuff. You've got eventually the location of the lift alarm so it all knows where it is, the reassurance message and stuff like that. So we can have a listen to this. This is the location of the original Memcom like where it's from. So that's where this one's from actually. Um, you've got the reassurance message, which you'll hear in a little bit actually. The guidance. Lift alarm. Please press 3 for location or hash to speak with trapped passengers. Before you hang up, please press star, then hash. Which is obviously how to use the lift alarm. All the other stuff like language, GSM pins. All the stuff that they'd use. For a lift, so then to exit the menu, we'll come to this and do one hash. So now I think the best thing we could do is to watch it this dial out. So we'll take our lift alarm, which obviously will make the buzzer go. If I pick the buzzer up so you can actually hear it, put that there. So you've got oh, look at that! I wired something wrong. Oh no I didn't. The buzzer is trying to go. Ah, oh, I think I chose a dodgy buzzer. That's not good is it? No one wants a dodgy buzzer. That's odd. Yeah I can feel the buzzer try and go. I guess my buzzer's gone dead. Well, on the other hand, I'm going to stop the video then for a second and wire something else up to it because I do have a spare thing we can use which I think will impress you all so in a few seconds I'll be back with either this repaired or another alarm that we can use make sure that you've got your uh, positive and negative the white way around all the time, can't speak or just simply get yourself one of the power supplies with red and black because it's ten times easier but anyway that's now fixed so holding in the lift alarm does that which obviously is what it would do in a real life scenario and obviously it has a delay built into the alarm so you can do that as many times as you want or even on the alarm but it won't actually do anything until you continuously hold it in then it will dial out which I'll show now but it glitches out because it's got no number which is why the LED instantly went out so what you'll need to do before you test any of this out is even if you don't want to use your own number just go and put something like 1 in back out of the menu and go again please remain calm the alarm has been activated and lift services are about to be contacted there you go wait for the dial turn so this would be attempting to dial out It failed basically because um, obviously it's not connected to a phone line but we'll take it inside and show that now and as you guys can see the alarm lights lit up so if we now reset the alarm as you can see that's gone out and the fault logs come up as no dial tone which is expected so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to disconnect the alarm we're going to take this inside and I'll show you it dialing out and calling my phone so I will 
hopefully as well this will get rid of the fault log on the memcom but like I said we'll go inside disconnect the alarm because I don't want to disturb anyone in my house and we'll get straight to it and get it to call out and you guys can see it actually dial out right so as you can see we're now inside and the lift alarm is hooked up to the house's telephone line um, which you can't see because it's in the corner the buzz has been disconnected like I said before um, now you can speak obviously between the memcom and the phone and the phone and the memcom but we won't be doing that today purely because everything's too close and you'll get interference but if anyone wants let me know and I'll try and record that one day on how you do it but for now what we're doing is we're getting the lift alarm to dial out to my mobile phone number um, which yeah let's just get into it Please remain calm. The alarm has been activated. So we're playing a reassurance. It just tells you on the screen what it's actually doing. So, wait dial tone. Dialing. Wait for an answer. Now it all speaks to us. Please press 3 for location or hash to speak with track Before you hang up, Press star, then hash. So as it said today, you press, you're supposed to press star, press then hash. Or hash. But um, we can't because we're not online with the car, or as it said, speaking to track passengers through pressing hash. So we are just gonna have to hang up on it and manually reset it. So, we'll actually, actually we'll just reset it through this now, which will hang up on the phone. There you go. So now, um, what we'll do is we'll get my phone to call it. Because obviously, as you've seen, when the lift alarm rang out, it told you where it, um, what to do with it and how to use it. Whereas when you ring it, it will tell you the location of it. So if we ring it now... it knows it's received the call. Seventy-one, seventy-three, Cameron Grounds, all the Hampton. There you go. So it tells you where it is, and obviously you still push hash to speed to traps passing this. So now we'll do the key to hang up? No, it doesn't want to hang up, so it will hang up on it. And then um, reset the memcom. Another thing that I forgot to show you guys is, obviously, most people's fear is being trapped in a lift. I meant to explain this in the last bit of the video. But, you know, we'll do it now. So most people's fear is being trapped in a lift, as I said. I keep repeating myself, that's what I'll do, you'll get used to it eventually. But these will stay on no matter what. So if we unplug this to simulate, simulate a power cut, look there's the plug. These have battery backup units built in. There you go, in fact, you can't see that. No, it's sorted it already. But it said technical call, which means that the memcom is already alerting engineers that the lift has lost power. And if I move my tripod over here a second, you'll actually see that we have a fault log again. If we press to go in the fault log, you can see the power's failed. So that is basically... All I can show you about a lift alarm for now. Feel free to obviously message me with requests on what you want to see next time. But that's about all I have to show you for today's video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Obviously don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to MB's channel. And yeah, message me with any requests that you've got or things that you want to know.